Thanks for staying with us. Uh, River State Governor Siminalaye Fubara has directed heads of administration in the 23 local government areas to take over from the elected council chairman whose three-year tenure elapsed on Monday. As the crisis over the tenure of the outgoing local government chairman in River State continues, the West parodic sh uh, gunshots at the Port Harcourt City Council on Tuesday morning. It was gathered that policemen fired severally into the air to scare away scores of Ijaw youths who came to demonstrate at the council secretariat against the tenor elongation. Uh, some other reports are saying that it was the youths that were shooting sporadically into the air. Whatever that is, is not the concern this morning. The concern is that uh, we've lost some lives. Uh, the concern is that this may degenerate into something else that will not only consume uh, River State but the entire nation as well. But we need to have an update of what is happening in Rivers and that's why we're glad to have with us this morning Mr. Goswil Jumbo. He's a publisher, uh, Christina Reports. He was a former Chief Press Secretary to the ex-River State uh, uh, Deputy Governor. Well, good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Jumbo. And good morning. Good. Uh, it's my pleasure to meet you again. <laughs> yes, it's, it's my pleasure to have you. Uh, well, um, <laughs> let me start on a funny one. Not too funny anyway. My brother is a policeman in Port Harcourt, and I, I still do not know who the policeman who uh, has died uh, is. And I don't know. I will find out later. But give us an update of what is happening in uh, River State right now, as of today we're, we're talking. We've heard some people died. We've heard that um, some people are tr saying militants have been brought to, to remove the people who are in, supposed to be in charge of local government. That's the chairman whose tenure has elapsed and all that. So what's the situation right now as we speak in uh, River State? Okay, well, uh, first of all, let me say that uh, the policeman that died will not be your brother. No, I can't uh, say thank God because it's someone else's brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we fell in, sorry, we sympathize and condole with the family of the policeman who lost his life in the course of, yeah. you know, going about his legitimate duties of protecting Nigerians. Unfortunately, it is what uh, some of us have been calling out that there's a need to contain this kind of abrasive politics this kind of politics that has no respect for societal values for our mutual uh, values the things that make us the human community it's unfortunate and now uh, somebody who has taken an oath to serve his country is uh, hard to lose his life in that way. Mm. It's unfortunate we condo with the family, but uh, going back to your question, uh, maybe we'll just start from here and rewind back. Uh, this morning, we have in circulation uh, a list of uh, caretaker committee members from the, for the 23 local governments in River State. They will be screened today by the River State House of Assembly. The office of the Speaker of you know, the River State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Victor Okojumbo, you know, uh, put out those uh, lists this morning and it's trending on social media. So they are expected that the nominees will be at uh, the House of Assembly this morning to be screened. And we're hoping that in the couple of days uh, they will assume office so that there's no vacuum in the administration of the local governments already you are also aware that the governor uh, yesterday in an early morning broadcast directed the heads of local government administration to from this morning take charge of administering the local governments uh, pending uh, when new directives are given them so obviously with the caretaker committees uh, about to be screened, confirmed, and inaugurated. Uh, there is already, you know, uh, that stopgap measures put in place so that there is no vacuum at all at the third tier of government. Uh, then yesterday, too, there were some local government chairmen, despite the fact that the amendment to the River State Local Government Law 
of 2018 has been voided by the River State High Court. Uh, some of the local government chairmen, you know, still attempted to go to the office yesterday, and some of them almost uh, lost their life because uh, it appears that the reverse people are a bit more determined this time around. And uh, let's also correct that uh, misnomer. Uh, some people, some politicians referring to the use of river states as uh, militants, as miscreants, and all of that. That is not true. They themselves used the services of these same youths. They didn't call them miscreants then. They didn't call them hooligans. They didn't call them cultists. So what happened now? The same people who are crying now were the same people in 2015 who were saying they will resist and the rivers use will resist anything that uh, the then governor Amechi brings, APCR and all of that. It was these same rivers youth who were resisting them. So what changed? The fact is that your tenure expired on Monday, 17th of June, by midnight. You have no business around the local government secretariat as at the morning of Tuesday, June 18th. And these youths were standing guard across the 23 LGAs. Well, not all the 23, about maybe 18 or 20 of them, because several of the other ones, somewhere close to 10 of them, were actually peaceful. You know, Opopo was peaceful, Boni was peaceful, uh, Abua was peaceful, Kahoda West, all those places, we didn't have issues. Uh, but some of these other places, if I query local government, you know, uh, that the former chairman was threatening and insulting the governor. The commission of police had to ask him to leave that place yesterday night, and he had to leave. And the police has asserted security governance across the 23 LGAs. All the local government council secretaries are now under the control of the, of the police pending the arrival of the HLGAs and then uh, subsequently, the CTC, uh, the, the, the ethical committees, you know, so that's what has happened then. Unfortunately, in one or two instances, in Iberi Omuma, in uh, uh, Potago City Council, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, where again, about three locations, there was some skirmish. Ahuda East, yes. Ahuda East, Potago, and uh, Iberi Omuma. So those three local governments, there were instances of, uh, you know, some some instances of violence uh, that resulted in the death of uh, somebody is feared to have died in Port Harcourt. As at yesterday, it's still not being confirmed yet. Uh, somebody was killed in uh, one of a vigilante person was killed in Omuma alongside a police officer uh, for Ahuda East. I think the local government chairman, a uh, chairman there, I think by name Ben Eke, he was um, handled and chased out of the uh, secretariat. Uh, then, a uh, Korean local government, I think he uh, smelt the coffee. Because aside the police arriving early enough in a proactive way, uh, we don't know what would have happened because late night there was actually some very serious shooting around the uh, Equerry Local Government Secretariat at Isiokbo last night. Uh, but we thank God for the proactive measures of uh, put in place by the Commission of Police to the uh, Tunji Disu. So, in a way, that's uh, a sum up of what the situation is in River State. But generally, everywhere is calm. Everywhere is calm. There is no uh, wala anywhere. Okay. But who was doing the shooting? We'd like to clarify that. Was it the police or the youths? Are these youths armed? Or let's just know. Okay, well, the videos in circulation as at midnight uh, yesterday, we are not very clear. But we know it was not the police. Uh, because in the video, we you could hear when the people shooting, when they got around the place. In fact, the person making the video you hear him greeting the policeman. So obviously it was not the policeman shooting. 
Uh, so, but the pictures were not too clear for us to even see who was shooting. Uh, but for certain, I can say by my own uh, expertise as you know, as a media uh, person who is able to analyze uh, information, it was not the police. So, but whoever was shooting, when they uh, came around and they saw the police was, you know, uh, standing uh, on guard around the secretary, I think they disembarked. They had to retreat. Uh, so, but for now, Isiopo is calm. Yeah. Everywhere is calm around the Isiopo uh, headquarters of the Kore local government. And every other local government, by the way, uh, and only there was no issue, Oyibo, no issue. Uh, yeah. Across Ogoni, uh, Kana, Gokana, Eleme, Thai, there were no issues. Everywhere was calm. Uh, you know, Eleme, some youths were around the secretariat to make sure there was no, uh, no wahala around there. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, that's like what is the situation. So we don't know who was shooting, but it was not the police. Okay, uh, well... Uh, one of the uh, chairmen claimed that the reason they were trying to stay in office is that it was not covered by law for that office to be manned by anybody who is not elected. So they, are, they, were, they were blaming the governor for not conducting an election into these offices, and that's why they are staying. So now you're talking about a caretaker committee. How much backed by law is this caretaker committee? Is it just because it has been happening in a lot of other states? It's not just uh, in uh, River State. Uh, people, uh, the governors just say, okay, I, I will not conduct election. Some, some of them for three years, for four years, they will not conduct election. And they put caretaker committees. Is it even covered by law, these caretaker committees? Or is it that they, they, the chairman were right? Okay, well, uh, let me first of all clear something. The person who was raising the issue about the illegality of the caretaker uh, committees was himself a two-time caretaker committee chairman before he was uh, projected for election and then he marched as the elected executive chairman of his local government. So did he then raise the issue of the illegality of the city signal? Uh, well, uh, that's aside. Uh, Nigerian politicians uh, seem to increasingly reduce the integrity uh, components in their engagements with the Nigerian polity. Uh, but it's fine. With time, we'll correct all of that. It, in fact, it's even a welcome development that uh, somebody like him is now... Uh, saying this, you know, it's it's fine that it's him saying this. So we're actually making progress. If those for and against caretaker committees can now converge on the fact that the Nigerian constitution is not explicit about having a caretaker committee man a local government, I think we are making progress. Uh, ho hopefully, one of these days we'll get to that point where before the uh, the term of the elected chairman you know uh, expires we'll have an election in place and then a new uh, leadership will be elected to uh, take over from the outgoing one you know so it's progress so i i like it that you know himself and his uh, uh calls to join us you know co-travelers are now raising the issue uh, uh, some of them were actually caretaker committee chairman uh, three months, another three months before they now became... Uh, in fact, for that particular person, he was even nine months, yes. For nine months, he was a caretaker committee chairman, three, three, three months, and then before he became an elected chairman. So we are happy about that development. But uh, let's... It's, it's straightforward. The Constitution of Nigeria does not recognize the caretaker committee it does not. There is no provision, no explicit provision in any uh, part of the the constitution for a caretaker committee. But uh, we also have to take into account uh, that uh, during the time of uh, Yaradua, 
the transition between Yaradwan and uh, President Jonathan, President Yaradwan and President Jonathan, uh, the doctrine of necessity has to be invoked by the National Assembly to have the Vice President, you know, act in place of the President and eventually, you know, become the elected uh, president. So in a situation where the environment is fluid, uh, security-wise, is uncertain. And if you have to conduct an election, and you know grassroots issues are actually very uh, tense. They are very, very fluid, and uh, you have to be careful. The local government administration is grassroots-based. And uh, that's not where you just walk in and say you want to conduct an election. So a situation where the environment was, you know, charged up, different interests were at play, you know, and all of them were threatening brimstone and fire. I think any uh, governor who is worth his onions, who has the interests of his people, you know, at heart, who wants peace and tranquility to, uh, you know, be reign in his state. I think it would be wise to restrain himself or herself from going ahead to conduct an election in that kind of environment. Uh, even, even as at yesterday, imagine that the mayor of Potakot, after his tenure has expired in the eye of the law, even if we are to apply the amended law, he has no business being in office because the law provides that the chief judge of the state is going to nominate magistrates who are going to swear in the, uh, uh, the local government chairman who the attorneys have expired. They have to be re-inaugurated to now serve that extension of six months. That has not happened. So what was your business being around, you know, the city council? What was the business of Ben Eke being around Ahoda East uh, local government secretariat? What was one of CK Samuel doing at Isiopo at the local government council? So imagine that even after their tenure have expired, they were determined to create situations that will generate violence. But thank God for the wisdom of the, look, uh, of the governor who was able to, you know, throw a different path in a more matured and more sensible way to avoid that. So the local government elections couldn't have held given the kind of situation we had in river state no election no nothing serious was happening and yet everywhere was charged up everywhere was tense so imagine bringing an election into the equation what would have happened so yeah. uh, the election could not hold for obvious reasons which all the all the camps both those for the governor those against the governor those are neutral agree that the state was not uh, suitable to have, you know, an election. Okay. okay, so now that election could not hold for now. So what are we going to do? Uh, the, the, the governance structure of Nigeria does not recognize vacuum. There has to be a feeling. So either acting, either whatever nomenclature it to be called, but somewhere along the line, the, the, the leadership structure at the different tiers of government have to be, you know, Covered. So, in the case of the local government, that the local government chairman, their tenures have expired. You bring in the heads of local government administration uh, to run for maybe a few days, a week or two, and all of that. But they cannot make general decisions that affect, you know, uh, how things work around the local government. Their their jurisdiction is limited to. The, the 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 civil service of the local government council so they may just be there pay salaries you know release in press and whatever and uh, just make sure the administration of the local government is going on but outside that secretariat i i don't know if the constitution actually gives hlgs uh, that kind of you know latitude to be able to run things around uh, the communities that fall under the local government. Okay, so, so uh, for, for want of, because of time, um, I'd like to, uh, by the way, River State um, chairmen are so hard working, they go to work on public holiday. I will commend them for that. Because <laughs> I was wondering why they would go to work on a public holiday that they're not supposed to be in the office and all that. But and the thing is, and yeah, the thing is, um, 
if this uh, administration, these caretaker committees are going into office, what are the terms? What, what, what number of months, for instance, are they expected to stay? Are they just going to be indefinitely in office until Rivers calms down so much that there can be an election? Or there will be a, a particular length of time, like you were mentioning in the previous uh, administrations, it was three, three months. Uh, will they also go with, uh, with the realization they might stay for three months? Or is it until whenever the governor sees that Rivers State is coming up for an election? When are we oh, expecting, yeah, think, in simple yeah. terms, when are we expecting a, an election to happen in River State to have democratically elected chairman into office? Uh, well, I, I've not had that conversation with the governor on that. Uh, but I, I'm sure in the coming days we'll be able to have clarity on that. Probably maybe by the time the nominees for the critical committees I uh, screen, confirm, and Maybe at the time of inaugurating them, we'll know how much time they have to be around. But if you look at the intent of, uh, of setting up a caretaker committees, I think it's an SPV, Special Purpose Vehicle Stop Gap Measure, you know, just to cover the gap for a, a, a certain uh, a number of days or weeks or months for the real thing to happen. We're expecting that given the 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 trajectory the trajectory of the, the governor's you know policy trust and the uh, actions and all of that if you look at that uh, we we don't see the the uh, ctc lasting for too long remember just recently we had an economic summit where uh, critical issues that border on how to jump start reactivate the uh, economy of the state you know we are discussed and a lot of uh, consensus we are uh, reached on how to stimulate the economy of the state now if that is going to happen the citizens would not have the powers to make some of these critical decisions you know when investors come in there are certain decisions that the citizens cannot make because they are not elected because they are not executive in nature, you know, as per the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So we expect that this may just be maybe two, three months or thereabout, and then we cannot get back to the uh, uh, polls and then get an elected government in place. Yeah, because you, you also acknowledge that uh, the actions of the governor have been very intentional, very deliberate. A signing off on several economic oriented you know uh, decisions that key that tie in into his policy trust you know uh, look at the songai farm he's been there he's looked at uh, several projects around the state some of these border on land and if there is no executive uh, elected government in place at the grassroots the investors that have been pulled into river states to reactivate the economy of the state to a uh, jumpstart the local uh, economy you know will not be able to have the legal framework the 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 the, the leverages the leverages they need to be able to drive uh, whatever intentions they they are coming with so okay. that's why we're expecting that these uh, citizens and uh, will, won't last we don't see them staying for too long okay like that all right uh well we'd like to thank you we uh, we are glad that you're saying there's a relative calm in river state as we speak right now we hope it continues that way and the people of rivers flourish uh, because if it if, if anything happens to rivers it can it can get to other places and we don't want that we want peace thank you so much mr jumbo for coming on the program of course it's my pleasure and my i can't it an honor always being with you here so Thank you. I may call away anytime. <laughs> All, right. All right, we're glad. Okay, yeah. we've been talking with Mr. Goswil Jumbo, publisher Christina Reports, a Chief Press Secretary to ex River State Deputy Governor, uh, His Excellency Tele Ikuru. Uh, well, we are going to take a very, very short uh, break. When we return, we are going to uh, be more or less celebrating one of our own who just broke the Guinness World Rec Record. Uh, for home cooking.
We like food. We like food. Okay, let's take that break and we'll be back.